click ewn.co.za. can cause adverse reactions. And most importantly, independent in mind. This is a normal response. Are you ready for our sports worldwide? Critics are part of the game. You know, uh, it's his opinion. I respect his opinion, you know, as a former player. By the way, who am I, you know, to go down to the level of junior game? Marawa Sports Worldwide. Ziwa Kengos, Lions Curry Cup coach, joining me live in studio. Teams like the Pumas, Krikwas, cheaters to a certain degree. They, what they've got is the benefit of continuity. Steve Kompala has backed Rulani Mukwena to scoop the coach of the season award. First of all, the guy is unbelievably intelligent. He's brains, brains, brains. You never get into coaching and succeed at a young age without brains. He's genius. Changing and re-engineering sports on the continent and the world. If we have load shedding, we don't have any backup power whatsoever, whether it's generators, to assist people to get out, people are going to get mugged, they're going to get injured, falling down the stairs, so on. Robert Marawa, live on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Sowetan Live. Hashtag MSW. Wednesday nights, soccer nights, your nights. Yeah, it's a Wednesday. It is soccer night. Our guest in studio already, Victor Gomes, will take your WhatsApp voice notes immediately. It's going to be a rush, rush hour. Trust me. Welcome to a 947. A big welcome as well to Vuma FM, Rise of Fame, Sowetan Live, wherever you're listening to us across the country, the continent, or the world. Uh, this is where we get interactive. This is where even Liverpool fans are shaking as we speak. So why do I say they're shaking? Because they have no idea what is about to transpire tonight. It's a big, big, big night when it comes to... Well, the Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp says that his side's the chances of knocking Real Madrid out of the Champions League were minimal at best as he looked ahead to the second leg of their Champions League last 16 tie at the Bernabeu tonight. Now, the Merseysides, they, they arrived, yeah, They're in the Spanish capital, trailing 5-2 uh, from the first game. While Klopp has also upgraded his assessment from three weeks ago when he said that Madrid were already through. The odds have not swung much in his favour. I wonder why. But let's listen very, very carefully uh, to what the coach has had to say. If there is only 1% chance, I would like to give it a try. So we are here to play an extremely strong opponent um, and try to win the game tomorrow. And as difficult as it is, that's probably possible. Um, not likely, but possible. I know what he's talking about, but anyway, I would prefer his situation. Um, but um, to have a bit of pressure to, to defend a 3-0 um, lead. But it's clear, Carlos started already warning his his boys and these kind of things 100%, and he's doing that in public as well. So Madrid can absolutely smell the blood, and um, they don't lose the conviction or confidence. They are tuning down, and nobody sees a, sees a difference. It's massive. It's massive um, skill from a team. They won so much in the last in the last years um, that n n nothing can really um, excite them in a negative way. So that's something which is absolutely to admire. But um, apart from that, how to win? Oh, that's okay. I didn't win that many games, but how to win a football game? I won a few games, so I, I, I think I know how that goes. 
All right, before we dive into a conversation with our guest here tonight, let's uh, let's doff our hats though to Mamelodi Sundowns, who have extended a highly impressive unbeaten run to 17 games in the DSTV Premiership when they thumped Royal AM 5-1 at the Loftus Stadium last night. Now, this particular win saw Basanda Wana edging closer to retaining the league title as they opened a 20-point lead at the top of the standings. They've also scored 10 goals and conceded just three in two matches. They're going to be joined as well to find and hoping to find that there's going to be more Asked of them when they travel to Sudan's Al Hilal for the Champions League clash on Saturday. Unbelievable schedule. Coach Rulani Mkwena was full of praise for his side. I see incredibly gifted football players. I see. That's what I see. Honest. And and you know what? I I learn a lot from them. You know. And I think I think life is is this the story that they are putting is a life lesson for a lot of us, a lot of people. That that if you put your profession first and you put the club first, this is what they do every single day. They they don't have I've never seen human beings like this. They don't have they don't have issues. They don't have they love each other. They live with everybody. You know, they, you put a youngster, they accommodate. They don't look down on people. They don't have gripes. They are just and that's why God blesses them like this. You know, and they teach me that. They teach me that that life is not about you. They, they don't imagine two days after you you beat Al Ahly, you have to come and play Royal AM, and you have to do it for the badge. And they run, they sacrifice, they don't see their families, and then they 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 still with that intensity. It's, uh, maybe let me steal something from 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 Klopp and Pep Lingers and they, when they called Liverpool men talented monsters. I think they're moving into that space their mentalities uh, and and really like i say it's life lessons life lessons that life is not they they, they put the club first uh, with everything that they do they put the club first and it's big lessons for for many of us many that is 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 mama lodi sundowns first the club is is a lot bigger than we imagine and these players understand that assignment and many of us don't Mm-mm. i'm here I'm here and I, I want to be here for as much as I can and as much as the club wants me here, I'm here. I'm, I'm loyal. Uh, I try to be as honest as I possibly can with my day-to-day. I, I try to serve this club and as long as they appreciate me here and they show that they still want me here, I'm here. I'm, Mama, and Mama Lodi Sundowns has done that since I've taken over. They've supported me, they've given me everything and I've got no reason to turn my back on this football club. Marawa Sports Worldwide. Yeah. This is 947. Music. Life. Hashtag MSW. Yeah, the interview for tonight. And if you've ever considered the messy actions or chaos that would occur on the pitch in the absence of a man like my next guest. And without them, football would be aesthetically pleasing, eh? But cannot be appreciated. Responsible for upholding the regulations during a game. I mean, what a glittering career in the middle of the pitch that this man has had. One many were sad to see come to an end. And personally, I was one of them. I just think he's too young to retire. He'll disagree with me, but we'll get to that. But he's done it all. I mean, he's officiated massive games as well as being voted the PSL referee of the season in 2012 as well as in 2018. The name Victor Gomes rings a bell different bells to different people and he might have blown the final whistle on his refereeing game but he is the chairman now of the national referees committee at the south african football association let's give this man his flowers chairman good evening a very good evening rob thanks very much Um, i'm honored and it's my pleasure to be here thank you so much for inviting me has that sunk in you're the chairman it's only by name it's only by name. How do, you, how do you change it from name to action? By hitting the ground on the first day that I got uh, appointed. Yeah. Uh, that night I already was sitting on a Zoom meeting on one of the subcommittees. And uh, yeah, it hasn't stopped since then. Going into that NEC meeting, did you have any idea that things will change and you would be the man tasked with heading up such an important portfolio? To be honest, no, I didn't expect it. Um, although... We understand the statutes now. 
that a former FIFA referee has to be uh, the head of this department or this committee. So possibly it was right timing, right moment, and yeah. And but were you ready, though? Are we ever ready? You tell me. I, I had the argument before the World Cup because I felt, and, and just for public consumption, the, the retirement age for referees is what? There's no official retirement age because previously it used to be 45. Correct. <clears throat> but they've stopped that now. And now it's a matter of can you pass the fitness tests? Can you pass the tests? And if you can, then so be it. I, I recall at the World Cup in Qatar, one assistant referee was 50 years old. Wow. Yeah. So you just got to pass. But you are how old now? I'm 40. You're 40. Mm. That, <laughs> that's crazy. That, that's why I'm saying to you that my assessment was that you still had at least, at least minimal, at most two World Cups where you would have been center stage. Victor Gomes doing what Victor Gomes does and does best. When you reflect now at a 40-year-old who is tasked to be, you know, chairman of the National Referees Committee at SAFA, are, 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 you, are you happy? Is that clear in your mind? So let me, let me give some perspective to this. Right. I felt that I've officiated every uh, final in Africa. Uh, I went to the Olympic Games. I went, uh, I did the, the Junior World Cup in Brazil. And I had the honor of representing our country in Qatar now. And I felt that I had achieved everything I wanted to do. And I needed, and, and I, in my humble opinion, I felt that I did better than the ones that were before me. Yeah. And I felt that it's now time for me to give space for the ones that are coming behind me to do better than me as to create a, a continuation of the South African flag at World Cup level. And I also always had it in my mind that I need to give back to refereeing. Um, and I feel it's just happened and it's gone into the right place. But giving back can happen. I mean, I see Stan Swartz is still there. He was, you know, is giving back. I think all the old guard give back um, at whatever level. Do you feel that you were... At the World Cup in Qatar, pushed to the level that we would say to Victor Gomes, you deserve to exit at the level that you deserve to exit? Or did you feel that, hey, there was a quarterfinal stage, there was a semifinal stage, there was a final stage that was open for you to be at? And given your stats, which I looked at and I watched your games, you did pretty little wrong. Thanks, Rob. Uh, you know, we can't. We are so many referees. We all can't get to semifinals. We all can't get yeah. to finals. So it's something that it's out of our control. But the one thing that I wanted to do was leave on the big stage, and I felt that was befitting. And and I felt I accounted for my performance, and uh, I wanted to leave a name that people will remember. What was the environment like? If if you were to change one thing about the environment, the treatment within referees at a World Cup stage because this is multinational people that are coming together. The, the way people are viewed is different. You know, we still have, well, currently it's going to be more for the next World Cup, only five spots for the, for the World Cup. So everything that we do, there's always a feeling that Africa is down the food chain. Mm. How, how do we improve that, Vic? Because you might not say it, but I see it. Look, I think uh, we can always get, go back to the old adage of the, the drawing board, as, it's, as yeah. they say. But we need to account for ourselves on the field. Uh, we need to, to look at things from a, a wider perspective. Uh, are we always playing with VAR? Um, what is the level of our football? Um, you know, these are all contributing factors that the powers that be need to consider. And, and it's something, for example, just to touch on VR already, yeah. it's, it's, for example, it, it, for me as a referee, I found it very difficult to go to, a, to a, a, a match where there was VAR and change my style of refereeing because it's required to. Yeah. And then come back home and then change your style again. So we need to be consistent. And once we are consistent, then I think we can, the levels will also improve. Yeah. I wanted to save that chat because it's, it's, it's uppermost, it's, it's top of the agenda after the break where we chat to Victor Gomes about VAR, about South Africa. Are we equipped? How, how soon can the implementation happen? I, I don't know, but now that he is in that position, you know, I spoke to him off air about it like a week ago. 
And he said, it's a discussion that needs to be had and we cannot delay this discussion. But is there alignment when it comes to association versus the commercial wing, which is the league, uh, in regards to moving forward? So he'll give us the answers to that. But just in, in, in summary, with, with where you are now, how often do you meet? You know, because you can't just be a chairman and have no committee. So there's got to be a willingness. There's, there's at times, dead wood. You're an exciting new, young addition to what we are seeing now. Is that complemented within the committee that you serve? Yes, Rob. Um, I can tell you just on the issue of times. I mean, just yesterday alone, we, I did two Zoom meetings. Yeah. Uh, touching with one of the, the, the what do I call this, the, the suppliers of VAR. And uh, we've spoken in another committee. So I have got a new committee and the appointment letters have been served now. And um, they will be announced, obviously. Um, so it's a vibrant committee. And, and, and yes, we've made some, some changes. There's been some people on the committee for many years. Yeah. And I had to look them in the eye and say, you know, thank you for your service. But we would like to try something new. How difficult was that for you? It was easy. Really? It was easy. Tell me how it was easy. Because when you come with a different philosophy, yeah. football is evolving, Rob. Football is evolving every day. Uh, so to speak yeah and we also from an administrative point of view we need to evolve we need to keep with the times and when you can have a conversation when you look somebody in the eye and say to them a b c and the person reciprocates and says look uh, i'm not happy but i respect yeah because it is ultimately for football it's like being a referee you need to make a decision not everybody's going to be happy but will people respect that decision? And some of the people that you obviously had to say goodbye to are people that you looked up to. There were people that when you were growing up wanting to be a referee, you looked up to them. So here's a new kid on the block, cracking the whip, wanting change to happen. So how does that all unfold? So it's exciting after the break because, as I said, uh, Victor Gomes, the chairman of the National Referees Committee at the South African Football Association, he is my guest. He's going to be with us. There's so much to talk about. And w when you look at VAR, and I invite everybody to be as objective as possible in telling us whether we are ready for it. If not, why not? If we are, then give us the reasons for that. Uh, but Victor Gomes is here to tell us that we are. And we're here to interrogate that to find out, are we really? Are we sure? How close are we? Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, on 947 Vuma FM Rise FM and Soweto Live Hashtag MSW You can be fit You can be cool You can be sick of this year You can be carefree You can be careful You can be anything you like Just gotta be ready Gotta be steady Gotta get you prepared Why don't you switch now Why don't you switch now Why don't you be with best men Be anything just be with Best Med Medical Scheme. Switch to us today at bestmed.co.za. Best Med Medical Scheme is an authorized FSP. The Galaxy S23 Ultra's 200 megapixel camera brings you what can only be described as wow worthy resolution. So much resolution, in fact, that you'll be able to zoom, crop, scale, and print your images without losing any detail. Now that's epic. Buy the Epic Galaxy S23 now and add the Galaxy Watch 5 from only 19 Rand per month. Available for a limited time only. Galaxy S23 series. Share the Epic. T's and C's apply. The love story is far from over. The rivalry, nowhere near the end. And the drama we are all here for is still brewing. Catch all the action, betrayal and everything in between in the final season of the smash hit series, The Wife. Keep watching, only on Showmax. Sign up at Showmax.com. Hi, I'm Bruce from Deco Firm, and I'm standing in our huge warehouse, packed with a massive range of incredible value furniture that we've just reduced by up to 35% in our massive Deco Fern warehouse clearance sale. So get down to your nearest Deco Fern or visit decofernsa.co.za and get your giant discount. The Deco Fern warehouse clearance sale. The best and biggest deals from our family to yours. T's and C's apply. Fly Emirates first and business class and look forward to a journey that's as incredible as your destination. 
Start your holiday with delicious fine dining, impeccable service and comfort that's out of this world. Sip drinks in our A380 onboard lounge, watch a movie and drift into a restful sleep in flatbed seats. Treat yourself to Emirates first and business class. Fly Emirates, fly better. Lotto Stars Aviator is here to launch your millionaire dream. Place your bets now and watch them get multiplied. Bet on how high the plane will fly and make sure you cash out before it flies away. You could win a payout of up to 2 million rand in seconds. Lotto Star, your world of live games. Lotto Star is licensed by the Impomalanga Economic Regulator. No under 18s. National Responsible Gambling Program. 0800-006-008. T's and C's apply. All games are fixed on betting events. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Uh, the newly appointed general manager of the Premier Soccer League, Andy Leis Nwabo, good to see. You. Are you going to be advocating for VAR? The league wants to have VAR. You can bring in the equipment, buy the equipment and put it here. We would still not have VAR being implemented. You because? know why? Because just like a, a, an aeroplane pilot needs to clock up certain hours in the air, piloting a plane before they can be granted a pilot's license. FIFA prescribe that a referee must have a, a requisite number of matches before they are appointed uh, to sit behind that screen and operate if they are in an official match. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Yeah, you know, the funny thing is when you listen to that clip, it's almost saying that we are not ready. We don't have enough personnel. 947 in Esmeralda Sports Worldwide that you're listening to live on Fubai FM, Rise FM, as well as Sowetan Live. Victor Gomes, you can actually watch it on YouTube. Simply go to our YouTube channel forward slash 947 Joburg. And I already see Anati Anza on that very same YouTube comment section saying that at the moment i don't think that we are ready for the var because of load shedding okay load shedding one side you heard what a said he's the new boss in the psl you're the new boss in terms of safa and he says we don't have the pilots to run this thing so um we need the training first of all yeah. but before we even get to training let's t can i go through the steps of var sure there's a 32-page document which FIFA um, hand out for the requirements of the introduction of VAR and for the working of VAR. We are currently busy now with the budgets for this VAR. Right. And we are, um, we are going through this 32-page document to ensure that we can now proceed with starting to train. Okay. So... With regards to the pilot uh, story, that is 100% correct. It mm -hmm. was the adage that I explained that the referees are required to undergo a certain amount of hours. Yesterday already, we, we spoke to a service provider because among the service that they need to offer us, we also need to have equipment for training. And then we need to discuss how things will be implemented in terms of not all games are on TV. Yes. But when a game is not on TV, it needs to be covered by VAR. So you so can. Then how do you cover that? Because that was always my point: is that we see games that we don't see. It's only the people that are sitting at the stadium because there is no coverage. Even if there is some form of coverage, it is not VAR compliant. So you don't see the offside line. You can't see the goal line because you also don't have goal line technology. So then, how will that be implemented? Excellent, Rob. I'm glad to see that we're all on the same page. Yeah. Every game needs to be treated for the layman's terms as if it's going to be broadcast on TV. Every game. Once that is done, then we can have VAR introduced into those games because it's not fair to have one of the, the matches played with VAR and another not played. Yep. So we need to understand that, that once it is introduced into our leagues, it needs to be introduced into all the games. Do we have capacity? Do we have an OB van with that capability? Because even now... We just saw Lucas Boripa Stadium being whipped out because it is not compliant and all sorts of things. And even some where they put scaffolding up and you find that the scaffolding is not really in line with where the offside line was. So they start drawing imaginary lines when they're analyzing and it's all crooked Correct. in a way. So these are the things that we are now investigating. We need to check each stadium. We need to see, is Team A here? Where, is they, where are they playing? So that's what we are currently investigating. And it's something that doesn't happen overnight. 
we then need to look at our central point. Right. Where is all the, the feeds going to be given to? And these are all cost implications. And it's, it's really, it's a mammoth task. And we are busy working with it. I mean, yesterday was one service provider. There is a new service provider. I think the Zoom meeting will be done on Monday. So we are going through everything and we are checking. What do we need to do? And this is all new to us. We are consulting with other FAs as well as to how they introduced. Mm. We are consulting with FAs that their, their football, we believe, is very similar to ours. And how can we best introduce it? So we, the committee is really, I mean, we've, we're tasked with this. There's a lot of things to be done. And it's not, it's not simple, really. I must be honest. And talking about that, and I know you knew in the position, and you're trying to affect change. But they're almost like innuendo being thrown around within the media space to say that the South African Football Association, although being a mother body, don't have the money. You know, they are flat broke as compared to the, you know, the richer commercial wing, which is the league. Uh, for them to be able to run it, but it's got to be from the mother body that this is. Do you have, do you have, do you have the money to run with this? And if you do, what are these service providers saying it will amount to? Well, like I said, Rob, you know, before I came here, my brother actually sent me a message and he says, "Hey, do more and talk less." Yeah. And I said to him, "No, we need to just start get the introducing. Out. Yeah, get the message out yeah. so that people don't, because we have a responsibility to report on these things in a positive way." As I said, because of the complications, I can't even give you a figure because it will be something that will be, you know, uh, it's, it's going to be incorrect for now. Sure. Let us do our homework. And like I say, we need to discuss, we need to investigate every field, every where the teams are playing. Then we need to look at the officials. There's other costs involved. The, the, the costs of the officials. We are now no longer sending four officials to a game. We'll be sending four plus the VAR crew. There's a replay operator. This we need to discuss this with the service provider and possibly the TV, uh, the, the TV that that cover the the, the the matches. So it's so intense. But who's supposed to cover the costs? Well, that's what we're busy working with. Uh, yeah. Once we have everything, we will present it also to to our superiors and we'll take it from there. But we are busy. The groundwork is being done to discover what we need, how it must be done, um, when it must be done, the time frames. Uh, etc so yeah we are i'm busy fact finding should i say for, give, for want of a better word give me give me an idea here vic because i think a lot of people feel that if there's a game at f and b then there's going to be a hub at f and b that is focusing on that match and then let's say there's a game that's being played at the same time in chatsworth then there's going to be a hub that's operating over there w what is the ideal scenario where there are games let's say there's two games playing at the same time at three o'clock then there's going to be a game at half past five and a game at eight o'clock do you have centrally and ideally for you a hub where those games are beamed to the var center where a particular team is looking at a particular game and can you know not be multitasking but focusing on one game what is ideal for us here in south africa so it is my belief and my committee's belief that we need a centralized point because you can do VAR with OB vans or, or VAR OB vans at each stadium. Right. We don't think that is the best way. We also can save costs by doing it at a centralized point because there's an out initial outlay for cost to create, uh, for want of a better word, I think it's called like a studio type for the, the layman on the street to understand, a studio where you have four rooms and you know that you can play four games concurrently at the same time. Right. And it can be serviced by that. Because, again, if you have it as part of an OB, an outside broadcast, I'm imagining the people that are running VAR, I don't know how it works, you can correct me, if they have access to then the, the commentators. Well, sometimes the commentators would lead and say, ah, there's no way. There's no way there was an offside. I'm sure VAR would come back with a negative uh, to that. Do they watch these visuals cold? So, so uh, that's a you hit a very interesting point which I only discovered yesterday. Yeah, there is now this thing of announcing the result, and that comes with an additional cost complication. Well, so these are type of things that you build onto your package as a VAR. You understand? So that is one thing, and then the the VAR. It's there's multiple screens in the VAR booth. We have a a, a TV which is called the um, direct feed from the the, the broadcaster. We also have a normal feed, and then below it we have what we call a three-second delay feed. 
Right. So uh, the, the VAR operator is sitting behind the, the screen, sees an incident, and immediately, because he's a referee, immediately he looks down because it's a three-second delay, and he can see if there's a problem. Immediately when there's a problem, he will tell the operator, I want to see the point of contact on this. While he's doing that, the additional assistant referee is now taking the lead of what's going on in the match. And immediately, if he sees no, that there's something wrong and the game is still in play, he will then send a message to the referee and say, Mr. Referee, stop the game in a neutral position. There is something I need you to see. I'd like you to come and see for a possible penalty, etc. Or possible violent conduct, etc. So it's oh. literally cold turkey that the, the VAR uh, sees the image. I'm already painting a picture of too many delays, too many delayed in getting the communication going. How do rugby get it right? Because the TMO, it's real time. And also the plus about rugby when you're watching it is that we get to hear. Stadium gets to hear. You at home get to hear. What is it that they're debating about as opposed to cold silence? There's a scoreboard that's put out VAR decision pending, which says nothing. So I don't know what Victor Gomes is saying to the VAR operator saying, listen, like the ridiculous handball yesterday that we, we, we saw in the Champions League. Go to the monitor. Go and have a look because we think that there is X, Y, and Z. What is rugby doing that they're getting right? Or is it just because there's a lack of the frequency of games or so on, but there's something that's working there? So allow me to disagree with you, Rob. Sure. Humbly. Please um, do. There's no delay. The, the issue is, for example, on a handball situation, like I had one at the World Cup. I saw the handball mm -hmm. and immediately I said, I've seen the handball. The hand is in a natural position. Nobody's complaining. What happens then, the VAR operator already automatically checks. By the way, he checks everything. But the referee needs to give him substance so that he can be quicker. Now, by me telling him that, he saw the image and it was exactly what I said. And therefore, check complete, all okay, carry on. Now, in an instance where a referee possibly doesn't have enough training, he would keep quiet. And then the VAR would say, uh, did you see the handball? And if he says no, then he would say, I recommend an on-field review for mm. possible handball. Because now the sole judge of the whole instance is by the referee on the field. So the referee then has to go to the, to the uh, VR, uh, um, to, the, to the replay monitor and check for himself and make the decision himself. Many people think that it's the VAR operator who tells the referee what decision to make. No, it's not. It's the referee on the field of play who makes the sole decision. That's a World Cup. That is a World Cup geared towards making everything work. You can't have a, a second delay. I'm bringing it to South African terms. I'm talking about a game at the Cesar Amabudu Stadium in, in Bloemfontein. And let's say your VAR center is in Randburg. And there is a problem. Boom. Load shedding happens. And there's a delay in terms of transmitting that communication. It is different based on where you are territorially. And we've seen CAF games where they've had to abandon the usage of VAR midstream, even at half, at half time when the VAR was there. Are we looking at that? And I see a lot of people on the YouTube channel saying, um, I mean, who's there? Huram Pele was like, what will happen VAR during load shedding? Uh, we want other teams to benefit a lot, unsure of the decisions by the referee. It'll also help referees to improve uh, in big stages like Mr. Victor Gomes. But there is that constant threat. We, we don't have backup at Lucas Moripa Stadium for a generator, for example, to keep the lights on and the game to carry on. So how are we going to keep the VAR going when we have such consistent load shedding? These are now factors that we have to introduce into the budget. Because if we're going to have VAR, we need the generator to be there. I mean, we, we're going to put the chicken or the egg first, you know what I mean? The, then this is an additional cost factor that has to be implemented yeah. into the VAR. But I must tell you, uh, Rob, we have come in leaps and bounds. And, and I want to take you through to what happened at CAF. When we started, we just started with a, with a final of a, of a uh, I think it was a Champions League, if I'm not mistaken, a few years, three, yeah, four years ago. Yeah. And that is the same principle that we will adopt in South Africa. We will first take it on a final, and then we will introduce it to, like on a cup game, we will introduce it on a final. We will then introduce it to semi st at a stage of semifinals, for example, and then we'll introduce it at quarterfinals. And once everybody's working in harmony and we understand it, then we can say, okay, we're ready to introduce this into the league. Yeah. Because we must be consistent. What we don't want is to introduce this tomorrow, and we are not ready.
and we are not doing it properly. But that's the worry, though, because I hear you. It's it's a proper implementation strategy. But the, the problem for me comes in where in a cup game, so Eric Tinkler, who's been unhappy about the decision that was taken against his team, obviously two of the referees have had to be struck out and you know put in, in, in the cooler box for a while. And he bows out, for example, from a cup competition based on a referee who made a mistake, who then went and gave and showed a yellow card to a Musa Nyatama at Swallows as well. You can't reverse that, although you are now put on ice. So the danger is he'll still be unhappy because those decisions could have been handled by VAR. There was no VAR. But it so happens that, hey, now we're in the semifinals. So all of a sudden there is VAR and you can get help. That then offers an unfair advantage. Just for a viewer, a football lover like me, to say, but hey, VR, you were there to help Tinkler or to help Middendorp or to help anybody else. But here you are now. You arise at the semi final stage. Look, your 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 explanation holds a bit of water. But however, I think our explanation holds more water. Uh-huh. Because at the semi final stage it's a new it's a new circuit. It's a new round. It's it's a new start. It's a fresh start for everybody. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Because if we are going to think in that manner, then we'll never introduce VR. We need to get everybody to understand how it works. I mean, there will always be snags. So if we don't introduce it like that, then I think we're doomed for failure if we start from the beginning straight away. So we need to introduce it slowly. And I think everything gets done that way. I only had four referees who were trained for VAR. I don't know if there's more. Um, you know, I noted yourself, Zakele Siwela, Akona, Vakalima, as well as Abongile Tom, uh, being the names of the referees. Are there more? No, those are the four. So the process, for example, I, um, Abongile Tom, he's only uh, a VAR referee. So you need to be a VAR in the cabin and a VAR referee. So you need a license to be on the field to work with VAR. And that's what he has. The same thing with an assistant referee. The same thing with a corner. Then you I, I, I'm loving the, the license part. But I can only take that after the break. That is, I told you, it's going to be compelling because we've got to fight for, for this. It's about technology. It's about moving to the next level for South African football. Are we ready? It is hashtag MSW. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, on 947 Vuma FM Rise FM and Soweto Live Oh man, Oscar's night shift just started, but luckily, so has tonight's game. With his attention switched to the pitch instead of the parking lot, he needs just one more result going his way. Howe! This is the final hurdle in Oscar's multi bet. With win boost, another great feature from Betway, every leg he adds will boost his win by up to 300%. And there it is, it's a shoe! Bra-ba-ba. He came in like a thief in the night. What a goal, what a win! Win boost, all thanks to Betway. T's and C's apply. Licensed and regulated by the Western Cape Gambling and Racing Board. No persons under the age of 18 years are permitted to gamble. For gambling counseling, call SARGF on 0800 006 008 or WhatsApp 076 675 Don't miss out on exceptional value and exclusive deals with the Telcom Blue Bargain Sale. Get the Huawei P50 on Telcom Flex on 6 for the incredible price of just 559 Rand per month with 50 gigs free data to use for anything you want. For this Telcom Blue Bargain deal and more call 10213 click telcom.co.za or go to any telcom shop t's and c's apply we got them all we got the bus that drives the dreams of the butelezi high basketball team we got the lift clubs the learner drivers the goggles who indicate well after they turn we got the newlyweds with the potatoes stuck in their exhaust we got the nervous parallel parkers the precision drivers, the 4x4 heading for Croke's Corner right now. We got them all. Tracker, we got you. For over 28 years, 
South Africans have trusted PostNet Courier with their parcels and documents. That's a lot of delivering, and because practice makes perfect, we've become very good at it. Over time, we've continued to go the proverbial extra mile, or 1.6 kilometers, to extend our, and hence, your reach. Today, you can choose between PostNet to Door, PostNet to PostNet, or PostNet International. And with over 450 stores nationwide, you'll find our services right up your street. For more, visit postnet.co.za. Make your Easter exceptional at Pick and Pay. Get 700 gram PNP cheddar, gouda, or white cheddar for only 84 and 99 each when you swipe. And one kilogram PNP low fat or fat free yogurt for only 26 rand 99 each. Exceptional Easter savings only at Pick and Pay. Valid 13 to 19 March while stocks last. T's and C's apply. At Trillidor, we never stop innovating. Introducing the re-engineered Trojan retractable products and Griffin Guard security screen with state-of-the-art materials that deliver advanced Trillidor strength at a better price than ever before. Visit trillidor.co.za and explore the latest in home security. Trillidor, strong, stylish, secure. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Uh, the newly appointed general manager of the Premier Soccer League, Andy Lais Mwabo, good to see. Decisions on the field. And you get these amateur referees, and you've called them that. You've got a professional sport being refereed by amateurs. Players used to work nine to five jobs. Yeah. That time has changed. They, they do nothing else but play football. The team managers, the coaches, is a full-time professional, mm-hmm. except where it matters the most. Men and women who control the match as match officials. Most of the referees are working. They offer their service to football on a part-time basis. Yeah. It, it's something that... But how is Ace and Noble going to fix it? What's the plan? You're looking at the wrong man. FIFA statutes prohibit the league from interfering with refereeing matters. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Good evening, Mr. Rob. It's Hulu Fulang here. Good evening to the MSW shoulders. And good evening to uh, Monsieur Victor Gomes. First and foremost, congratulations on your retirement. Congratulations on all your achievements. Congratulations on whatever it is that you have done in your incredible career, especially representing South Africa at the recent um, Qatari FIFA World Cup that has taken place last year. My big question, in fact, my big concern that goes with the question is that what is the National Referees Committee doing with regards to the training of referees because you could tell that some referees they go into this game ill prepared they do not know they make such dubious decisions and it just i think it might go back to the training are the referees being trained well enough so that they can go into every game with confidence and taking a proper decision in every single game that is what i want to find out great job mr Rob. thanks hi robert hey we here from naturena please ask uh, victor Gomes what does he want to see changing uh, from our um, local reveries. Thank you very much. Good evening, uh, Mr. Marawa, and uh, good evening to the person who referees committee of uh, Victor Combs. We have known uh, Babu Victor as a no-nonsense referee, Mr. Marawa. But my question to him is, what made him to hang uh, his whistle so early? Because I think, by the way, he can still offer us maybe 10 to 15 years as a, a referee. What made him to change his mind and think of retiring? Thank you, Mr. Mara. Oh, uh, afternoon. Can you lay a tembisa? Please ask uh, Victor Combs, uh, Rob, if is there any different set of rules for local football, CAF, and World Cup? The reason I'm asking this is because if you look at how he handled the situation uh, between himself and Mohamed Salah in the final against Senegal and also in the World Cup versus v, what is used to give to players in PSL red cards is totally different. Thank you.
Good evening, Robert Murawa, the Trian here from Western Cape. Uh, just ask your case, Mr. Combs. Last time they said uh, because we don't own the stadiums, it's difficult to install the device, uh, the VR device. How will they do about it? That's point number one. Also, we need it ACP because soccer is no longer about passion alone. It's become a career. It's become a money spinner in terms of betting companies. So one decision can throw you out a uh, potential winner, you know. So, yeah, that's my question. I agree. It's Malcolm X. Uh, you know the guy you have there is a is a very good referee, very confident guy. You know, very you know he stems his authority on the game. You know, he's he's a human being too. Yes, at times it could be wrong. You know, but then still you know be firm that you know he took the right decision. But uh, I think he's an achieved referee, a very good referee. Uh, congratulations, him. To be quite honest, VR. I thought VR was gonna come and solve our problems. After I've seen our favorite teams have been knocked out due to this VR, I, you know now, Robert, let the referees make their mistakes now because clearly VR, you know, it's so confusing. You find when it suits them, they go and check. When it suits them, they don't go and check. You just don't know what's happening. You know, really, I, for me, I thought VR was here to help, but now I can tell you I no longer want it. Let's go back to a point where referees make their own mistakes. Thank you very much. Yeah, explosive, man. Says, leave this VAR stuff away from us. You're listening to 947. You're live on Novuma FM, Rise FM, and on Soweto Live, wherever you are around the world. YouTube channel. Lots of heated debates already on that platform, on the live chat. So uh, log on forward slash 947 Joburg. Victor Gomes is my guest. He is the chairman of the National Referees Committee at SAFA. Oh, where do I even begin? Let me start with Malcolm X. Malcolm's like, I, I was in favor of VAR, loved VAR, thought it was the solution giver for a lot of what was happening on the field. But now we see referees, either they go to the monitor, others decide not to go to the monitor, don't get invited. To, so... It gets applied globally because if you're watching Serie A, people say, but it works better in La Liga. La Liga people work in much better. Then you watch EPL, then EPL, even as early as last night again, uh, you'll find an Alan Shearer bemoaning what is going on as far as the VAR decision is concerned. So how do you address a guy like Malcolm X who feels it was the saving grace, but now he feels, you know what, just let referees make their own mistakes? Rob, I must state that I've been a referee, I've been on that side, and yeah. now that I'm on this side, I can tell you that VAR is the future, and I don't see football without VAR. And let me tell you just for one reason why. People will accept a human mistake on yeah. the field, but people will not accept a mistake after VAR intervention. But we've seen that though. So this is what we need to work, yeah. because there are many still things, as I said to you in, in previous um, interviews, is there's interpretation on certain things. And it's only a pity that I will work hard. And that's why FIFA have now introduced this thing of explaining the decision. Because there are reasons and there's protocols when you go to the screen. Mm -hmm. And there's reasons and protocols when you don't need to go to the screen. For example, an offside. An offside that's just a plain offside. You don't need to go to the screen because anyone who sees that offside, even my 12-year-old who plays football will see that it's offside. So it's not an interpretation. It's fact. Therefore, the referee does not. But when it's a handball, yeah. it's not fact. It's now interpretation. Did he make his body bigger? Was the hand in an outstretched position? And the referee has to be to make that decision. Vic, on that point about offside, like body parts now are essential in terms of an offside decision. Whereas, like you say, your, your eight, seven-year-old would have seen that before. But right now, they zoom it in. You almost go into a geometry class to be able to say, ah, was the ankle ahead of the elbow and did it go ahead of a kneecap, for example? And that is our decision has come. It, it's, it's never been that. It is that technical. Mm. You know, it goes back to where you were saying, where you started the conversation, where it costs teams and it, yeah. it makes teams, you, you know, you get promoted, you get demoted, you win, you lose. And so now we're trying to get as accurate as possible. And, and these are the things that it, it involves and the complications of its involvement. All right, some of the other voice notes that came through. So that was Malcolm X. Um, 
I thought the one from the Western Cape was also quite important, talking about the ownership of the stadiums, um, saying that if you wanted to go lay out, and Stadia do have facilities. They, they can offer you facilities, but like we know in football, not too many people own a stadium. These belong to the council, municipalities, whatever it is. So if you don't have the ownership, then how do you lay claim to setting up? Well, at the end of the day, it comes back to the story where the equipment needs to come in. Yeah. So whoever's the owner needs to give the permission for the equipment to be put in. And uh, yeah, so the, the equipment doesn't really belong to the stadium. The equipment is hired stuff, as an example. Uh, there's a service provider who brings the equipment. So the stadium ownership, I'm not too, I don't think there's too much yeah. uh, importance on that. All right. So Bandina talked about the application of it uh, from a CAF perspective. He even used the Mohammed Salah incident and now you handled it saying that if it was in south africa you would have handled it differently you'd probably flashed a red card for it do you find that it is applied differently so the question was related to are there rule changes i made some quick notes here yeah, some rule sure. changes and um it's not it's it's every every game is different every temperature is different um the decisions might look the same but they're not they're similar so the heat of the moment is different yeah it's a final uh, there's different, you know, the, w will it be effective? And this is what I say, what I did on that day was effective. Maybe on another day with another referee, it wouldn't have been effective. So as a referee, that's what you need to do. You need to make sure that what you do is effective and in lines with the laws of the game. Training of referees? Yes, uh, we are training our referees. I mean, next week on the 19th, we start our mid-season sem seminar again. So, yeah, the, trefi the referees are being put through the, the pace. And there's something very important for me that I just wanted to touch on with regards to the ice cooler and stuff. Yeah, I have introduced now, I have advised and we, we, we've discussed this at committee level, we will stop suspending referees. You will stop suspending? That's correct. Oh. What we are going to do is we are going to introduce a rehabilitation program. Because a referee who's suspended goes home, he's suspended, doesn't do games, and when he comes back, we are disadvantaging, disadvantaging that referee. Yeah. So what I've, we've discussed and we've, what we've introduced is to have a rehabilitation program where the referee will be asked to officiate matches at a lower level. Mm -hmm. He will produce those reports. Okay. He will also he will have to do some online tests and also will be working with our physical instructors. And with this package, we then enable the referee to come back and give us better results than what he previously had. So it is now moving from a suspension to rehabilitation. And and I'm sorry, this one's very close to my heart, maybe because I was a referee. Yeah, go ahead. But we don't get a list of Prime Media's staff who get suspended or get a warning letter or get fired. We don't get that list every week. Yeah, but we don't pay like we go pay for a football <laughs> game. You know, it's, it's a... <laughs> radio you switch on when if we go and queue up at the stadium to go and watch a game not to be stuffed up by amateur referees in a professional game which is exactly where we were leading to so but if you wanted a list we could publish it from prime media and say these are the guys who've been suspended no problem but it will add nothing to the guy that wants entertainment at the stadium pays for transport pays for entry fee pays for his seating or sits prime time on television and watches on on the box but Mamela, bro, Rob. Mamela we need What we need for the people to understand and the football lovers to understand is we only have a pool of referees. Yeah. If every time a referee makes an error of judgment, I don't think any league in the world will have referees at the end of the day. It is not this thing of, oh, nothing is being done. No, there is a rehabilitation program being done now. So what it's happens working to, in the background. So what happens to Gladwin Malloy? I mean, he was a first assistant who denied Swallows the goal against his Galaxy. Uh, he sent, you know, Nyatama off. There's Tediso Marupeng. You know, he was given time out for the incorrect decision against the uh, Arrows in the Super Sports United game. You know, suspended for four weeks. So, so you're saying that with immediate effect as of now, that is out the window. You put in a rehab program for, for how long? So, for example, the, the procedure is still the same. Yeah. The, the game gets reviewed. We have technical members that review this, this, the, the footage. And we can categorize the mistakes in three forms. Right. The first category is when an error of judgment is made and it changes the, the points for that team. That referee will be sanctioned as a category one error, for example. Then a referee makes a wrong decision, gives a penalty that's incorrect, for example. 
but it does not affect the points of that team. Oh. That is a category two error of judgment. Then we have a category three where a referee makes a technical error which has no bearing on the game. That then goes to the review committee and they make their recommendations to the technical committee. And based on that, we then come out with findings. There can be six games, eight games, etc. There is a, a table that is being tabulated for that. What if your referees then become, they're sitting in rehab, so you don't have referees available to referee at the highest level? I don't know Mr. Robert Marawa to be negative. No. Remember, we, 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 we look ahead, we plan, and we try to put things in motion so that if there is no referee available because they're all in suspension or they're in rehab and you've got a big game, category A game, and none of your category A game referees are available, that is a serious possibility. Negative not. Forward thinking, yes. Yes, definitely. I agree yes. with you on a serious note. Look, these are, are things that I've now come from an operational perspective and that the committee are now sitting down and we are trying to improve on all these on all these and trying to close every loophole like you say so that we have these um and what we want to do is reduce the errors of judgment yeah by starting with and, and i like the one caller who said that we, we are focusing too much on var we need to start i mean i've given a, a, a simple thing we've I've, I've said to them go out to the schools go out wherever you can and start doing more level one tests start doing more level two tests because that's throwing the fishing line in the water and getting people to become referees. Okay, let's not fish too much because you had the power as a referee to tell me that it's going to be referee's optional time, it's going to be extra time, it's going to be <laughs> additional time, it's substitute. I don't have that luxury. Otherwise, I'm going to be on that list for Prime Media for uh, being a bad boy and overrunning and so on, and I don't want to be that. So I've literally got 45 seconds. We're talking about professional stuff here. We're talking about professionalization of the game at a VAR electronic medium space. But we still have we still have amateur referees, Victor Gomes. So how are we expecting these amateur referees to be now VAR experts and become superhuman beings and yet they are not full time professionals? Why are we not paying them enough to make them professionals? Yeah, this is, is something that uh, we need to look at. I mean, the, the professional wing has started. I was one of the first 20 African referees to be on the professional list. And um, so this is something, and it all comes down to budget drop. At the end of the day, these are things that I've, uh, as, and, and as a committee, we've decided to, to, to push for the VAR now. We are working on that VAR system. And then we can start looking at the other challenges that we have, like the implementation of professional referees and stuff, and see how we can best get this in because it, but it, is, is it not worthy to professionalize the referees make it a bit more appetizing for them to say okay i'm going to drop my day job this looks appetizing enough for me to hold as a full-time job as opposed to putting in a professional aspect of how to run a game and then only professionalize the referees yes of course uh, you know again chicken or the egg yeah. which one do we want to do at the end of the day, you have professional referees in other countries that make errors of judgment. Absolutely. So we, we need to, to see which battles we want to, to choose first. So, yeah, that's chairman. our approach. Yeah, boy, chairman. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Thank you so much, man. I, I look forward to you changing as well as re-engineering, like we do, the refereeing system within South Africa. Victor Gomes, as we said, open, honest, from the heart. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, on 947, Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW. Today with the same energy. energy.